Um, so yeah, with that, let's start with the first session. Um, I'm happy to introduce Rachel from Crossref and Christine from EBI, and they will be talking about a funding flash mob. Excellent. Thank you. Right, let me... Uh, Okay, can you see the slides? Uh, not yet, no. Not yet, okay. Is that working? No, sorry. Oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> it worked a minute ago when we were it testing it. It worked a minute ago, and then obviously it's decided not to. Um, Chris, are you okay to share? And then we'll, um, we'll work on that basis. Yeah, there it is. Okay, excellent. I'm let's um, let's run with um, let's run with this. So, um, thanks for the introduction and welcome to our funding flash mob, um, which is about registering and connecting grants with Crossref and Europe PMC. So, I'm head of special programs at Crossref, and Chris, I'll let you introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. That's really loud. Can you hear the back background feedback? Uh, yes, that is very loud. And now? Slight echo. Uh, now. Still a bit of an echo. Yeah, um, but I think I, we can try it like this. Okay. All right. So um, I'm Christine, and I work at Emble EBI on the team that works behind your PubMed Central. Oh, that's very echoey. Um, not quite sure what to do about that. I'll stop there. Do you have, okay, yeah, that's then moved to Rachel. And Christine, maybe you have a headset? Rachel, you're still muted. Oh yeah, if you wanna move me on to the next slide, I'll keep going. Cool, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna risk a video as well. Um, I'm not going to risk a video as well, but um, those of you might be familiar with uh, Flash Mob. This is um, this is a link to a video of one that was held by the um, by the University of Cambridge back in 2019. And um, so, please don't get disconcerted by the fact that it's lots of people in one place. But Flash Mobs became a bit more popular over the past. Um, five or six years, one person starts to dance, lots of people join it, bit of a surprise. Um, so in a way, that's what we're doing online at the moment. Next slide. So when trying to sort of um, crowbar what we were talking about into the, the session, I started thinking about parallels between what we're asking people to do with um, registering grants and a flash mob. So one person has to start it off. They have to begin the dance. Others join. Might not all be totally coordinated. So what I'm saying is um, funders come in lots of different shapes and sizes, and they can provide different metadata and information on the types of funding that they have. But they're all basically doing the same thing. It's open and it's visible, which is great, and also pretty cool. Next slide. So. Before we drill into the how, um, it's useful to look at really why on earth or why on earth did we decide to do this and why are funders interested in it? So painting a richer picture of research support means identifying areas of expertise and emerging activity, helping understand connections between projects and collaborators. In maintaining a healthier research environment, um, we hope that this will lead to less duplication of effort in overlapping grants or repeated projects. And in terms of analysis, 
um, simplifying the process of research reporting with automatic matching of outputs to, to grants. The, the stuff where, where all the legwork comes in in terms of reporting with, between research managers, funders and the researchers themselves. We want to free up people's time so that they can do and support research. Next slide. And this is from um, this is an orbit survey that was published um, in 2019. And I think this this kind of gets to the, the point of the um, the point of it. Um, a lot of funders state that the majority of their reporting requests are fulfilled, but a lot of the information reported is late or of low quality and requires time consuming cleanup. So that would be a really nice thing to do in terms of streamlining workflows. Next slide. And it's not just, um, I think the points come across loud and clear, it's not about the identifier itself, but it's about the metadata associated with that identifier. So in our grant schema, which I've linked to below, we. We collect, um, we collect lots of different types of funding, um, prizes, awards, facilities, um, and facilities, and we're, um, we're, we're looking to expand these, um, these types due to feedback from funders. So providing that information in a standard format makes it easier to, um, to compare in a standard way across different funders. And in the metadata, being um, good practitioners, we also collect good stuff like ORCID identifiers, ROARs, ARDC have already started to give us those in the metadata, and the funder identifiers as well to help us accurately match between grants, people, and other outputs. Next slide. And it's to facilitate um, this workflow, um, a funder registering a grant with um, Crossref, the researcher passing that grant identifier to, um, to the publisher upon submission. My little asterisk is to remind me that maybe that's something that in time could be, um, could be pulled from the, the author's ORCID record into submission systems. So the authors just select that and passes on through. The publisher can take that information, um, take that information, they can validate it against the metadata that Crossref has and associate the grant with the published output. To complete the circle, they can then pass that information to Crossref in um, the metadata related to um, preprints, to, um, to articles and other outputs. And then the funders and more can search for all outputs related to the grant. Instead, we're just finishing up some work to make that available and um, to make the grant information available via our APIs. So if you're a funder who's registering this, I'll be in touch soon to ask for information on filters and facets you'll be interested in. Next slide. So before I pass to Chris, um, who's doing this? So I keep having to update these slides because we've had a lot of um, additional funders um, join to kick off to kick off the year. We've got um, a sponsor in Altum who have built the registration of grants into their proposal central platform, which has catalyzed a lot of funder members to join. So that was just released um, last week. As I said, ARDC are registering grants with ROARs and also folks like the um, as said, folks like um, Welcome, who really led the line on this. Um, and as said, I know that other funders are starting soon, including the European Commission, who are going to start to register all of their Cordis grants in bulk um, within the next six months. So we've been talking to them. So um, I think that's our kind of, we had our first, um, our kind of, our, our flash mob starter in Welcome, and then have grown from there. Next slide. So, these are the grants that we we've seen registered as of um, as of yesterday. So these are really starting to um, grow, and I'd expect to, to show a, a much um, a much broader um, a much broader list soon. And um, so as said, you can expect those to start coming out via our APIs, and also to start um, in our new schema updates so that they can be collected alongside publication output um, metadata. So that's really the next steps. Chris, I'll hand over to you. Thank you. So, hi. Hopefully that's a bit less. Much better, yeah. All right, okay. Um, so, a little, 
a little word about your PMC. Um, I've got a bit of echo here, so I'm going to have to stop listening myself. Okay, um, so European C is a database that collects together trusted resources of biomedical literature. Um, and with this powerful search engine, um, I'm just going to take this off because it's actually really bugging me now. Um, can you still hear me? Yep. Yeah, in the yes. echo. Okay. Um, with its powerful search engine, um, it provides comprehensive, free, and open access to research abstracts, full text, and preprints. So, European C, I, the point I want to make here is that we really work to enrich um, publication records by connecting them to other research resources, such as data deposited in public uh, repositories um, and uh, researchers via their ORCID identifiers and funding, as I'll demonstrate here. So um, when acknowledging funders in publications, researchers have historically done this by including you know, word strings in their publications, or at best a reference to the internal grant identifiers that funders assign to the grants they reward. And um, this, you know, in recent years, it's been recognized that this system where every funder devises its own set of internal identifiers is an ideal. So hence the move to move towards DOIs as a global grant identifier. Um, so let me start by telling you about the um, benefits of global grant identifiers over um, internal grant identifiers. So disambiguation is the first. I mean, we found in the past instances where um, uh, an internal grant ID for the Wellcome Trust also maps to a grant that was funded by the European Research Council. So that's no good because they're, they're not unique. Um, citability, well, DOIs are much easier to cite and they persist. Automation, um, with um, if you combine the DOI with machine-readable metadata. And of course, human usability, if the DOI redirects to a website with information and linking, as I've said, to existing um, PIDs in the ecosystem, such as DOIs for publications or um, ORCID identifiers, uh, data accessions, etc. So, um, getting started. So, how we got started with this all was to um, was was we worked with one of our funders, the Wellcome Trust, and basically the funder has to join Crossref to get grant identifiers um, for their grants. Um, and these are DOIs, as I've mentioned. So here's a typical DOI, and you'll remember from Rachel's slide that um, the prefix, the 10, bot, the 10 dot, and then a string of five numbers refers to the um, funder, and then the back half in blue is the specific grant identifier. So that's the, the format of most grant um, DOIs. And um, in return for getting a grant identifier for the grant, the funder has to submit Crossref compatible metadata, which is machine readable. Um, they also need to provide openly available landing pages to which the DOIs link, and these are human readable. So what European C does is um, it does steps two and three for its funders. Um, it produces the XML files um, containing the metadata to send to Crossref. And, um, its grant finder database serves as the website providing landing pages for each grant. So let me show you now, I hope this works. Yeah, a short demo on how um, we have linked publications to grant records. And um, before I start, I just want to acknowledge the players in this field. So that's um, the Wellcome Trust, um, Crossref obviously, and PLOS One. So hopefully this works. Will you give me a thumbs up, Rachel? It does. All right, okay, so I think it's working, yeah. Um, so uh, just to say that we have 32 funders um, who provide us grant information, and we store this in, the, um, in our grant finder database, which is accessible as a grant finder tool on our website. So here's our website. And if you go to tools and then grant finder, what you'll see is it takes you to this page where it shows you the European C funder grants and COVID-19 grants, which is a separate tab grayed out here. So you can search through these grants by these different fields. So from keyword through to grant ID. 
But for this demo, which I've pre-recorded, as you can see, um, we're going to look at the Welcome Trust grants. So if you click on Welcome Trust grants and you search those, what you see is that there are 17,900 plus records. All um, have been assigned grant DOIs now. And if we scroll down to a grant that's still active, here's a landing page for a particular grant. And you can see that it has a grant ID DOI um, assigned to it. So um, I'm going to show you the short, this short proof of concept with a plus article. So this is um, showing you how we link publications with, with grant IDs. So we were put in touch with plus one ed authors who um, are also welcome funded, and they made dead sure to include grant DOIs in the funding statement of their article. So here you can see in purple two um, DOIs for grants. And if clicking on each of those will take you to their specific landing page within European Seas Grant Finder database. So let's just click on one of those. And here is the um, particular grant record. Um, you can see the author at the top or the grant holder has an ORCID identifier that's live. It's a link that takes you to the ORCID and also takes you to their author profile. This author was funded two million pounds plus over a duration of five years. Um, the internal grant ID and the grant DOI um, are the identifiers assigned by Welcome internally and by through Crossref. Mm -hmm. And then these are the different char um, characterizations of the different grants. And um, most importantly, these link through to um, publications. So there are 31 publications linked to this grant. And if you click on those, the live link takes you through to this page listing the 31 publications linked to this grant. You can click on each of these records and it takes you to the individual publication. You can see that these publications were published from 2019 to 2021. They comprise 26 research articles and five reviews. And this gives you an idea of the um, open access status of them. So it's all linked in, and this is the sort of thing we're hoping to do is um, people who participate in the grant, the Global Grant Identifier Scheme, get grant DOIs for their grants, and they can link them to all sorts of other resources via the metadata. So um, we're hoping to encourage lots of people to participate. And we now have, um, oops, let me just see if I can. We now have a Crowdcast poll that we'd like to put up. So, um, Helena, if you wouldn't mind putting up the Crowdcast poll. I have, um, you should be able to see that at the bottom of your screen. I can't see it online, but that's because I'm sharing my slides. Yeah, I can see the first votes coming in, so people oh, are able cool. to access All right. it. Okay, I'll just take you through the first two. So really what we want to know from the audience is what kind of a stakeholder are you and um, that, that you might contribute to this grant identifier scheme. So if you are an other, please won't you put in the um, chat room what other you are, just so that we know. Um, or if you're more than one. The second question we're hoping to get you to answer is, do you use internal grant identifiers in whatever role you're in? So these are the local grant IDs that are assigned by each funder separately from one another. Um, Rachel, do you want to take over from here? Yep. And yeah, so our next question was about if you'd use the time to, to use um, to use um, to use grant IDs if available. These are not leading questions. We won't be offended. Um, and I also wanted to ask, as the as the fourth question. Um, what information or fields do you think are key as part of grant metadata? Um, I said Euro, I, I could, Europe PMC provides really, um, I would say really rich information, got um, lots of orchids in there, descriptions, things like that. Um, but we deliberately kept the schema quite light with a limited number of required fields because, uh, because 
funders have lots of different requirements. And I think that we can, again, sort of increasingly kind of standardize that over time. But if you're someone who uses this kind of information, um, what kind of information be useful? I do think contributors are great, um, but then also obviously things like the project title, um, the institutions associated with the, the researchers seems key. So um, so have a think and let us know if there are any fields that you think, yeah, that's that's kind of key. And, said, and you can just answer that again in the chat. You don't have to do it in a, in a poll. Tom, emphatic. I like it. And I think Rachel and Christine, there are also two questions in the Q and A. Yes, that you may want to answer. Ooh. So yeah, I can take. Um, and I say, Chris, you feel free to jump in at any point. Um, the question from Tasha, um, we ask authors for a lot of information about, about submission, the, though many peer review systems can now extract metadata to auto-populate forms. How would you suggest we simplify authors' lives to avoid entering information in lots of systems? Um, certainly that's that's the dream, but I think it said one of the things that I've been um, thinking about is obviously um, authors, um, this sort of more automatic curation of ORCID records, which Tom has mentioned that they're um, that, that ORCID's working on, but having um, say submission systems pull more information from ORCID, so that instead of a researcher having to enter their funding information, they could just select that from um, they could just select that from a list that's reflected in their ORCID record would be great. And I think again the the collection of um, sort of more standard identifiers as grant identifiers then also helps third party tools and systems work in ident um, and sort of um, tools that extract that information to recognize and say, oh, that's what that thing is. Um, so so I think there, there, there are a couple of things there um, because everyone having their own slightly differently formatted um, differently formatted grant identifier is just means that it, it's hard to kind of have a standard approach to those across systems. Okay, with an eye on the clock, do you have any final questions for the audience or is there a question from the audience that you'd like to answer or any concluding remarks. Um, I see there's a question, does your PMC share grants with PMC and does PMC have a similar database? Um, I think we definitely, um, we received, so we take in a lot of data from PMC and reflect it on our website and they, I don't think they had the same sort of uh, grants, grant finder database as we do. Um, we certainly only show stuff on, I think for the GDPR reasons, which were listed in the previous question, we only um, put that information, we add to the information that PMC already puts in there. So they link in local grant identifiers to their, their um, DOIs and to their articles. And we add to it if we have additional information in our Grand Finder database, but I don't think it gets sent back to PMC necessarily. Okay, I think any further questions can be moved to uh, the Q&A Slack channel so that Christine and Rachel can answer more questions there after this session. Um, so yeah, Christine and Rachel, any concluding words? No, nope, I think thanks everyone. <laughs> Watch this space. Chris, thanks for working me, with me on um, working together on the presentation. We, we, we made it work. Yeah, please join us. Okay.